200 farmers in Japan traveled to Tokyo today to protest against nuclear power after the Fukushima t disaster, of course, contaminated cow milk and spinach grown near the plant. That situation is nothing new for many residents of Ukraine, where 25 years ago today, Reactor 4 at that country's Chernobyl nuclear plant exploded after a shutdown test. The blast and the ensuing fire spread deadly radiation miles from the plant, forcing the relocation of hundreds of thousands of residents. But some refused to stay away for long, returning to the only place they knew or ever could call home. More Magazine has profiled just some of the nearly 200 women now in their 70s and 80s who have survived in the fallout zone against all odds. Leslie Seymour is the editor-in-chief of More Magazine, and it's great to see you, Leslie. Hi, this is to be fascinating here. stuff. I mean, I remember when I was covering the Reagan White House and Chernobyl took place, we were landing in Indonesia, and all of a sudden we were all becoming, you know, experts on something that was happening, you know, thousands of miles away. But the effects spread because of the prevailing winds. The effects spread to Belarus. I mean, and lasted forever. Why would these women want to go back? It's all the pull of home, and that's what the story right. is about. I mean, it's amazing what humans will do to get back to their birthplace. This is where they grew up. They said that being happy and being back in their own, you know, place where they can go and, you know, see their ancestors buried and the homes they grew up in was more important to them than anything else. And the interesting thing is, is that there's not scientific research, but there's anecdotal research that shows that those women who went back, and it's mostly women, live 10 years longer than the people who did not go back. And they went back three months after. They were told by the government not to go back, and they said to them, you know, come and kill us or we're going back ourselves anyway. So it's the the homing instinct and the fact yes. that they were they were in you know going back to their roots. But yes. what about the water? What about the milk? Uh, the contamination? They're told not to eat it. They were told you know they had shipments of milk coming in from the outside. They were told not to eat the animals there. The government gave them stipends, all that stuff, and they said to heck with this. We're growing our own fruits and vegetables. We're we're going to eat the pigs that we raised here, and they've been doing that. You have to remember that's almost. 25 years long. What's really interesting is the men have all died off. Don't ask me why, but men tend to have shorter mortality across the world than women. These women are all in their 70s and 80s. Some of them have, you know, they have various illnesses, but they said that they actually seem to draw, die of strokes before they die of things that are related to radiation and things like that. It's kind of completely crazy. And in the I mean, it is. It's so counterintuitive. I mean, there could be other factors. We're, you know, we're not scientists and we're right. remote control. It it's could be smoking or other <laughs> issues that affect men more than women in that society. I, mean, I don't know. But, but it is all women, and they, they, you know, they band together. It's 200 of them mm -hmm. now who are living there, and their kids can only come visit them, like, once a year because of the radiation. And you know what the really kooky thing is, Andrea? They are now putting this up as a tourist site. Do you know that? That is really kooky. You, I mean, they, they're known as the babushkas, which yes. is the word, the term, for a grandmother or elderly woman. Yes. I do remember going in 1994 to Belarus on a Clinton trip, a Bill Clinton trip, uh, and we were told to wear dosimeters yes. and not to drink the milk or the water because of the westerly winds, that the, the really worst radiation effects were actually... Uh, to the west of ground zero there. And but you still. still have to have, that's, that's Hannah reading the magazine. That's one of the oh, ladies. We got the magazine back to her so she could see the pictures of herself. I mean, it's completely crazy. And they do make you, you know, wear a dosimeter now, too. And they have to check you, you know, all the time. And our writer who was there, apparently the ladies kept offering to make them mushroom soup. You know, mushrooms are one of the worst radiation things. Picks up all the radiation. And she had to learn how to say in Russian, no thank you. They were trying to feed her the whole time. My gosh. Oh, this is fascinating stuff. <laughs> and and what a wonderful, fresh insight uh, from Moore Magazine into a new way of looking at Chernobyl, which has become, you, you know, Chernobyl it has become the icon of the worst disaster in history uh, globally. And at a time after Japan, it is ever more present on this 25th anniversary, Leslie. And this is a positive, a very weird, strange, positive ending for some women. Not for everybody, but for some people. Leslie Seymour, a great issue of More Magazine. <laughs> it's great to see you. Good Thanks to see so very you. much for joining us. Take care.